China Merchants Bank Beijing branch cries a matter of life and death internally, reports deleted. Xi Jinping plays both salesman and emperor as foreign investors vote with their feet. U.S. firms in China face headwinds, lower shipments, exports, and revenue. Woman wanders naked in Wuhan Mall, public asks, what's happening to society? Beijing's infiltration becomes a nightmare for overseas Chinese. It's all covered in today's China Truths. China Merchants Bank Beijing branch cries a matter of life and death internally, reports deleted. The economic slump in China is exerting strain on the financial system. Recently, an internal memo believed to be from the China Merchants Bank's Beijing branch, named Proposal for the Beijing Defense Battle on Corporate Deposits, found its way online. This document states that as of March 10, there was a plunge in the branch's corporate deposits exceeding 80 billion yuan, about 11.07 billion US dollars, from the last year, placing it at the bottom of the pile across all branches. This precipitated a rallying cry for every member of staff and the executive team in the branch's wholesale division to engage in the so-called Beijing defense battle. Here, corporate deposits are understood to be the funds deposited by businesses and organizations into commercial banks on a credit basis. The rhetoric used in the memo is dramatic, employing phrases such as Beijing in crisis, darkest moment, a fight for survival, and if we must die, we'll die standing. The document also praises the branch's historical performance, highlighting its once remarkable achievements of increasing deposits by 100 billion yuan, about 13.94 billion US dollars, annually, reaching a record-setting deposit volume of over a trillion yuan, and at times outperforming major state banks like the Bank of China and the Agricultural Bank of China, thus becoming a standout symbol in the banking system. The emergence of this memo set off a flurry of online debates. Netizens have expressed concern, noting that if China Merchants Bank, a front-running commercial bank, is facing such challenges, then the predicament of smaller and mid-sized banks is likely even more dire. Some have also pointed out that the Beijing branch's rock-bottom ranking in corporate deposits has laid bare the financial distress in the CCP's capital city. On March 25, the Hong Kong-based Phoenix Finance covered the story, citing a customer service response from China Merchants Bank that they were urgently verifying the veracity of the memo and promised to announce the findings at the earliest opportunity. Instead of the bank's findings, what followed was a comprehensive blackout of the memo across the internet. Even the related articles by Phoenix Finance and the mainland's financial world were expunged. However, some self-media commentaries with vague wording on mainland portal websites have remained available. Xi Jinping plays both salesman and emperor as foreign investors vote with their feet. On March 27, Xi Jinping met with U.S. business representatives in Beijing, a move described by experts as him playing two roles simultaneously, both as a salesman and an all-powerful emperor. However, inconsistencies in his statements and actions pose challenges in rebuilding confidence among foreign investors. According to Reuters, the meeting was initiated by Evan Greenberg, CEO of the American insurance company Chubb, and was attended by Stephen Orleans, president of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations, and Craig Allen, president of the U.S.-China Business Council. The meeting was intentionally scheduled on a different date than the China Development Forum and marks Xi's second encounter with U.S. investors since dining with them in San Francisco last November. During the meeting, she stated, exchange, cooperation, and ultimately integration, doesn't that mean a part of you is in me, and a part of me is in you? We should seek common ground while respecting differences and build more consensus. However, some experts argue that Xi's goodwill is merely rhetorical and lacks concrete actions. They point out that the Chinese Communist Party's policies are subject to frequent changes and highlight the recent implementation of several restrictive laws, such as the anti-espionage law and the law on guarding state secrets. Moreover, there have been multiple instances of abrupt searches and detentions of employees at foreign-funded companies. Xi's remarks have also faced criticism and mockery from Chinese netizens. One user commented, this is typical scumbag behavior, saying one thing and doing another. Who can't do that? It's not just foreign capital, even Chinese capital wants to flee, 
If they remain in China, they'll lose access to the entire world. Foreign investor confidence hard to restore. China's economy is facing its worst downturn in four decades, with exports, investment, and consumption all stagnating. This has led to high unemployment, factory closures, a real estate bubble burst, a debt crisis, and significant foreign capital outflows. Foreign businesses are losing confidence in China due to the country's slowing economy, unpredictable policies, and the government's handling of the pandemic, such as the Shanghai lockdown and strict tech regulations. As a result, many renowned foreign companies have withdrawn from China, ending the era of Chinese contract manufacturing and accelerating capital flight. U.S.-China relations have rapidly deteriorated due to the trade war, chip competition, geopolitical tensions, and the Taiwan Strait situation. Numerous U.S. companies have also withdrawn from China, such as Forrester Research, Vanguard Group, and Amphenol Corporation. Despite Xi Jinping's attempts to reach out to the U.S. last year, his efforts only served to highlight his limited appeal and lack of confidence, regardless of how forcefully he tries to convey his message. The exodus of foreign capital has had a profound impact on China's economy, causing the Chinese Communist Party to become both anxious and fearful, prompting Xi Jinping to make another appeal. However, experts argue that at this juncture, such efforts hold little significance, as the entire Chinese market has already undergone substantial changes. CCP's dictatorial system, root cause of China's economic woes. Mr. Li Hengqing, a U.S.-based economist, argues that revitalizing China's economy requires two fundamental changes, establishing a genuinely free market economy and creating a society based on the rule of law. These core elements ensure that resources are allocated efficiently and that all individuals are equal before the law. However, the CCP's authoritarian regime is incapable of addressing these issues. Similarly, Mr. Su Ziyun, a scholar at Taiwan's National Defense University, supports this view, noting that the Communist Party, not the courts, determines the legitimacy of business activities in China. The lack of an independent judiciary, legislature, and media prevents effective checks and balances, further exacerbating the problem. Mr. Tang Jingyuan, a U.S.-based commentator, criticizes Xi Jinping's political intervention in economic life, citing the three-year lockdowns and zero-COVID policy as examples. Instead of reflecting on these policies and exercising restraint, she has intensified political interference in economic activities, contributing to China's current economic situation. She appears to believe that speeches, meetings, directives, and ambitious targets will magically revive the economy. However, the measures he has taken are entirely political, such as using force to crack down on financial crimes and employing propaganda to promote a false sense of economic prosperity. In summary, the CCP's dictatorial system, which prioritizes party control over the rule of law and market forces, is the primary obstacle to China's economic development. Without fundamental changes to establish a free market economy and an independent legal system, China's economy will continue to suffer under the weight of political interference and inefficiency. U.S. firms in China face headwinds, lower shipments, exports, and revenue. In the context where Xi Jinping continues to direct a positive narrative about the economy, American companies are currently seeing a continued decline in revenue from China. As geopolitical tensions escalate, trade export controls intensify, and market competition becomes increasingly fierce, adding to the fact that the Chinese market has not recovered from the massive contraction it experienced since the COVID pandemic, leading to decreased domestic consumer spending in China. In that context, the Wall Street Journal reports that, affected by these factors, many multinational companies are shipping fewer products from China, exporting fewer products to China, and experiencing a decline in revenue from China. These changes have prompted some companies to reduce their investments in China. The report states that the share of U.S. and other multinational companies in Chinese exports once exceeded half. Now, this proportion has dropped to less than one-third. China's vast domestic market once fueled growth for U.S. companies, but now China is attempting to shift away from U.S. goods and towards products from other countries and domestic manufacturers. Data from the McKinsey Global Institute show that from 2006 to 2020, 
the proportion of U.S. companies and the total revenue of companies in China dropped from 16% to 10%. Walmart, Starbucks, and Estee Lauder face challenges from Chinese domestic merchants as Chinese consumer spending decreases. U.S. automakers such as Ford and General Motors are also losing ground. Last week, Bloomberg reported, citing people familiar with the matter, that Tesla has reduced production at its factory in China amid weak growth in electric vehicle sales and fierce competition in China, the world's largest auto market. U.S. companies are increasingly choosing to de-risk from China. In the 2024 China Business Climate Survey report, the American Chamber of Commerce in China, AmCham China, stated that the survey shows that 57% of surveyed U.S. companies still feel uncertain or lack confidence in Beijing's opening up commitments. U.S. companies generally adopt a cautiously optimistic attitude towards future investment in China. Most surveyed companies said they are only considering a small increase in investment in China in 2024 or have no plans to increase investment at this time and prioritize advancing core business rather than new investments. The survey indicated that up to one-third of surveyed U.S. companies believe that foreign capital receives more unfair treatment compared to local enterprises. Although this situation has improved compared to the previous two years, the perceptions vary greatly among different industries. For example, the consumer industry said the environment has improved, but the technology and R&D industry believes the situation is still deteriorating. Woman wanders naked in Wuhan Mall, public asks, what's happening to society? Recently, mainland media have reported a news story of a woman who was seen strolling naked, sometimes walking through a Wuhan shopping mall in Hubei province, occasionally standing with her face covered by her hands, or lying prostrate at the mall's information counter. Mall employees confirmed the incident to Duang News on the afternoon of March 26, security guards subsequently intervened, covered the woman, and notified the police. Officers from the Zhangjiawen police station in Wuhan's Hongshan district processed the incident in line with standard procedures but declined to comment on whether the woman had a mental health issue or what prompted the incident. Prior to this event in Wuhan, there were online claims of a streaking event in Nanning, Guangxi, which purportedly involved both men and women. The Nanning Public Security Bureau refuted these claims clarifying that the photos and other content shared online were actually compilations of similar events from different locations and times, such as in Suzhou, Anhui, and Pubei County in Qinzhou, Guangxi, among others. The incident sparked reactions online, with netizens lamenting, so many of these incidents are happening lately, what's the matter? Society is getting more and more insane. The pressure is so great these days. Many can't bear it anymore, leading to a surge of unusual incidents. Beijing's infiltration becomes a nightmare for overseas Chinese. The Chinese Communist Party's relentless pursuit of Western technology through various means, including talent recruitment programs and overseas influence, has cast a shadow of suspicion over Chinese nationals living abroad. As Western governments become increasingly wary of Beijing's infiltration, overseas Chinese communities find themselves caught in a complex web of distrust and isolation. One major contributor to this growing skepticism is the CCP's far-reaching control over Chinese citizens, even after they have settled in Western countries. Chinese students and professionals in the West, particularly those in sensitive, high-tech fields, face heightened scrutiny and visa rejections. Between June and September 2020, more than 1,000 Chinese nationals had their visas revoked by the United States under a program targeting graduate students and researchers believed to have ties to the Chinese military. This has led to a sense of covert discrimination, where Chinese nationals are often barred from critical positions due to concerns over their allegiance to Beijing. Beijing's systematic theft of Western technology occurs through various channels including the acquisition of overseas companies, joint ventures, cyber hacking, economic espionage, and the exploitation of gray areas such as educational institutions and research centers. The CCP operates approximately 40 national-level talent recruitment programs, with the total number estimated to be close to 300 when including regional-level programs. The most prominent among these is the Thousand Talents program, initiated in 2008, which targets researchers and scholars in American universities. 
Chinese agents have established headhunting firms and venture capital funds targeting Chinese engineers in Silicon Valley, facilitating the theft and implementation of technology in China. These efforts are supported by alumni associations and professional organizations that are not officially affiliated with their namesake institutions, such as the California Berkeley Chinese Alumni Association and the Tsinghua Cross Strait Alumni Association. The influx of red capital from China, often originating from princelings within Beijing, further complicates the situation. This money is laundered overseas and then circulated back as capital for technology startups. The Chinese Association for Science and Technology, with about 20,000 members, is an example of how the CCP invests money to conduct overseas award programs, effectively extending the protocol of technology theft overseas. For overseas Chinese, the path to success often involves tying their destiny to Beijing, a decision that can be difficult to reverse. Analysts suggest that to successfully integrate into their adopted societies and avoid manipulation by Beijing, overseas Chinese must establish clear boundaries with the CCP. They advise maintaining a low profile, avoiding deep involvement with CCP-linked organizations, and refraining from sharing personal thoughts to minimize the risk of being targeted by Beijing's manipulation tactics. However, even those who try to keep their distance from the CCP may find themselves involuntarily involved. Some international students have reported being pressured to participate in political activities organized by the Chinese embassy, while others have faced financial scrutiny or repercussions against their parents' businesses back home if they refuse to comply with Beijing's demands. Ultimately, the most effective way for overseas Chinese to navigate this complex landscape is to establish clear boundaries with the CCP from the outset and refuse to be drawn into its sphere of influence. By doing so, they can protect themselves from the potential pitfalls of Beijing's global reach and successfully integrate into their adopted Western societies. As one netizen commented, as long as they have relatives in China, overseas Chinese become potential spies who could leak information at any time. With a soft spot to exploit, a dose of nationalism, and materialistic temptations, few individuals are invulnerable to Beijing's coercion. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.